So I'm into books that were mine when I was little or my mom's when I was little. So this was mine when I was little. Um, it's from 1959 is when we got it. The Tale of Mrs. Tittlemouse by Beatrice Potter. Once upon a time, there was a wood mouse, and her name was Mrs. Tittlemouse. She lived in a bank under a hedge. Such a funny house. There were yards and yards of sandy... Is it right? Yeah. There were yards and yards of sandy passages leading to storerooms and nut cellars and seed cellars, and all amongst the roots of the hedge. There was a kitchen and a parlor and a pantry and a larder. And also there was Mrs. Tittlemouse's bedroom where she slept in a little box bed. Mrs. Tittlemouse was a terribly tidy, particular little mouse, always sweeping and dusting the soft, sandy floors. Sometimes a beetle lost its way in the passages. Shush, shush, little dirty feet, said Mrs. Tittlemouse, clattering her dustpan. And one day a little old woman ran up and down in a spot, red spotty cloak. Your house is on fire, Mother Ladybird. Fly away home to your children. And another day, a big fat spider came in to shelter from the rain. Beg pardon? Is this not Miss Muffet's? Go away, you bold bad spider, leaving ends of cobweb all over my nice clean house. She bundled the spider out a window and he let himself down the hedge on a long, thin bit of string. Mrs. Tittlemouse went on her way to a distant storeroom to fetch cherry stones and thistle down seed for dinner. All along the passage, she sniffed and looked at the floor. I smell a smell of honey. Is it the cowslips outside in the hedge? I'm sure I can see the marks of little dirty feet. Suddenly, round a corner, she met Babbity Bumble. Zzz, bzz, bzz, said the bumblebee. Mrs. Tittlemouse looked at her severely. She wished that she had a broom. Good day, Babbity Bumble. I should be glad to buy some beeswax, but what are you doing down here? Why are you always come in at the window and say zzz, bzz, bzz? Mrs. Tittlemouse began to get very cross. Zzz, bzz, bzz, replied Babbity Bumble in a peevish squeak. She sidled down a passage and disappeared into a storeroom, which had been used for acorns. Mrs. Tittlemouse had eaten the acorns before Christmas, and the storeroom ought to have been empty but it was full of untidy, dry moss. Mrs. Tittlemouse began to pull out the moss. Three or four other bees put their heads out and buzzed fiercely. I am not in the habit of letting lodgings. This is an intrusion, said Mrs. Tittlemouse. I will have them turned out. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I wonder who would help me. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I will not have Mr. Jackson. He never wipes his feet. Mrs. Tittlemouse decided to leave the bees until after dinner. When she got back to the parlor, she heard someone coughing in a fat voice, and there sat Mr. Jackson himself. He was sitting all over a small rocking chair, twiddling his thumbs and smiling, with his feet on the fender. He lived in a drain below the hedge, in a very dirty, wet ditch. How do you do, Mr. Jackson? Deary me, you've gotten very wet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Tittlemouse. I'll sit a while and dry myself, said Mr. Jackson. He sat and smiled, and the water dripped off of his tail coattails. Mrs. Tittlemouse went round with a mop. He sat such a while that he had to be asked if he would take some dinner. First, she offered him cherry stones. And no, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Tittlemouse. No teeth, no teeth, no teeth, said Mr. Jackson. He opened his mouth most unnecessarily wide. He certainly had not a tooth in his head. Then she offered him thistle-down seed. tiddly widdly widdly poof 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 said Mr. Jackson. He blew the thistle down all over the room. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Tittlemouse. Now what I really, really should like would be a little dish of honey. I am afraid I have not gotten any, Mr. Jackson, said Mrs. Tittlemouse. Tiddly widdly widdly, Mrs. Tittlemouse said, smiling Mr. Jackson. I can smell it, and that's why I came to call. Mr. Jackson rose ponderously from the table and began to look under the cupboards. Mrs. Tittlemouse followed him with a dishcloth to wipe his large, wet footmarks off of her parlor floor. When he convinced himself that there was no honey in the cupboards, he began to walk down the passage. 
Indeed, indeed, you will stick fast, Mr. Jackson. Tiddly, whittly, whittly, said Mrs. Mrs. Tittlemouse. First he squeezed into the pantry. Tiddly, whittly, whittly, no honey, no honey, Mrs. Tittlemouse. There were three creepy collie people hiding in the plate rack. Two of them got away, but the littlest one got caught. Then he squeezed into the larder. Mrs. Butterfly was tasting the sugar, but she flew away out of the window. Tiddly, whittly, whittly, Mrs. Tittlemouse, you seem to have plenty of visitors. And without any invitation, said Mrs. Thomasina Tittlemouse. They went along the sandy passage. Tiddly, whittly, buzz, buzz, buzz. He met Babbity round a corner and snapped her up and put her down again. I do not like bumblebees. They are all over bristles, said Mr. Jackson, wiping his mouth with a coat sleeve. Get out, you nasty old toad, shrieked Babbity Bumble. I shall go distracted, scolded Mrs. Tittlemouse. She shut herself up in the nut cellar while Mr. Jackson pulled out the bee's nest. He seemed to have no objection to stings. When Mrs. Tittlemouse ventured to come out, everybody had gone away, but the untidiness was something dreadful. Never did I see such a mess. Smears of honey and moss and thistle down and marks of big and little dirty feet all over my nice clean house. She gathered up the moss and the remains of the beeswax, and then she went out and fetched some twigs to partly close up the door. If I, I will make it too small for Mr. Jackson, she fetched soft soap and a flannel and a new scrubbing brush from the storeroom, but she was too tired to do any more. First she fell asleep in her chair, and then she went to bed. Will it ever be tidy again, said poor Mrs. Tittlemouse. The next morning she got up very early and began a spring cleaning, which lasted a fortnight. She swept and scrubbed and dusted and rubbed up the furniture with beeswax, and she polished her little tin spoons. When it was all beautiful, neat, and clean, she gave a party to five other little mice without Mr. Jackson. He smelt the party and came up the bank, but he could not squeeze in at the door. The Tale of Mrs. Tittlemouse